What is MOX? MOX is basically a 90-27 tulium light laser. It's not really a tulium light. It's not a tulium light uh, laser. It's a tulium light because it uses a diode of 1927. So you cannot see the tulium laser, but it uses the same wavelength. Okay. Uh, look, I light lasers and lasers are based on physics, and I'm very obsessed about this issue. And people sometimes do lasers and they do not understand what they do. So we need to understand that we work with chromophores and with absorptions, and I strongly recommend you to get well trained because if not, you're not going to understand how these lasers uh, uh, work. So it's a 1927 means we have absorption basically by water, and if you look at absorption, it's between much lower than erbium and, and, and higher than the one we get with the 1470 of Hello. That's why the absorption is between both. So we'll have a non-ablated intense heating, so we're going to use coagulation but not ablation, up to a depth of 250 microns. The penetration of light absorbed by water is inversely related to the absorption coefficient. That's why erbium penetrates very, very, very shallow, because the absorption is very high. 1470 penetrates up to 700 microns because the absorption is lower, and you are in the middle, so about 250 microns. The second thing to remember is Moxie is a fractional device, and fractional means that we're not covering the full surface. We're driving holes into the skin, okay? And we are doing coagulation, not ablation. Important thing is that we might play here with two parameters. The first is the fluence, the amount of energy. And the amount of energy will establish the penetration. So we can penetrate less using a, a lower fluence, like here, or we can increase the fluence to get a deeper penetration, okay? So that's the main thing. So we will control the depth of the activity of the laser, basically playing with the fluid. And the second parameter we can change is the density, how much surface we cover, okay? So if you wanna get something deep, we will have to have penetration, we're going to increase the fluence. But if I want to change the surface of the skin, the texture, I will need to cover a higher percentage of the surface, so I want to increase the density. So we might add the low density, as you can see here, or you might increase the density if you want to improve the skin texture. Okay, so we can play with density to cover more surface to change the density, or we can change the fluence to get a deeper effect if our remodeling effect wants to be deeper. The important thing of the device, it's motion activated. So that means that uh, the device is able to um, detect the speed of movement of the handpiece to deliver the shots so that you get a homogeneous density. Because if you move fast or slow, it absolutely changes. It has to adapt the speed of the shots to get always the same reaction. And not all the lasers have that. So these are the main characteristics of this laser. And, and now let's think about how we play with the different settings of a ablated, non-ablated laser. We can try to induce a textural remodeling, okay? If you want to change the texture, you can play with two parameters, the density. If we increase the density, that means the amount of surface that's gonna be burned with the laser, we're gonna increase the effect of the texture. So we might act with a low density for mild textural changes, imagine here, 10%, for example, if you do holes like that, you cover a small part of the epidermis. So the textural change you're gonna induce is not so important. But if you wanna change the texture, you will have to increase its density, and you might go up to 40%, which you might be doing with the halo. If you cover more area, more skin will be removed, so the effect in the texture will be higher, more intense, okay? So density basically changes the textural uh, change. We can also play with ablation here. If your laser has ablation like Hello, adding ablation, you remove more tissue, you will have a more intense textural uh, change. And we might act with lower amounts of ablation if the textural change is not important, or you can add more ablation to get more intense um, effects, okay? I mean, if you get deeper with the ablation, you also get more surface change because at the end you remove more tissue. And the second thing we might add, want to change is, it, is the depth of remodeling, okay? Uh, depending on how deep you want to go, depending on the change you want to improve, you might change the penetration. So if you want to treat a superficial lesion, a superficial change like a superficial wrinkle or superficial acne scars, you don't need to go deep. So you might work with uh, penetration up to 250 microns, which are the ones delivered by Moxie, okay? 
it's easy to understand. If I accumulate up to here, this will be my top effect. But if I want to go deeper, I need to go deeper with my laser. So we'll have to increase my penetration. Okay. In Hello, you play with a penetration depth. So the laser will adapt to penetrate here. We're going to play with moxie with the fluids. So if we're going to get deeper, we're going to increase the fluids to get a deeper effect. Okay. So going back to moxie, um, again, remember it's a single waistline laser monochromatic that just emits a 90-27 Tullium line uh, laser. As we said before, we have basic absorption by water, mid absorption by water, that determines that we have a penetration of up to 250 microns of coagulation, sorry, not, not ablation. And how can we play here? We might work with low fluences, five to 10 millijoules, to get a low penetration. 100 microns from something like that. If you want to get deeper, we're going to increase the penetration the fluids. Increasing the fluids will increase the penetration, so we'll have a deeper effect. So if you want to get deeper, my idea would be to increase the fluids. And the most aggressive parameter we're going to use is 20 millijoules, which gets a penetration of about 250 microns, as you said. So the more fluids, the more penetration. Sorry. Pain, yeah, obviously, the more, you mean pain or penetration? Yeah, I mean, uh, from the low flow to yeah. the higher flow some of the pain will be the no, Pain sensation, a little bit more, but if you use numbing cream or if you use cooling, I can, I make it perfectly for even 20 millijoules. It's much less, I mean, like everything, the more aggressive you are, the more pain you will have. Uh, you're gonna see, we're gonna do a five to 10 millijoule uh, treatment, then you're not gonna feel almost anything. If you go to the 20 millijoules, it, it's not comfortable, but you can perfectly do it with a numbing cream on top. You won't need anything else. With Hello, when I'm able to do a Hello treatment to the aggressive settings, even that can be done just with numbing cream. I add Zimmer on top because I have Zimmer in my practice. It's going to be better, and it's not mandatory. Okay? Uh, this is talking about the fluids. It's about the densities. We might add with lower densities, 5 to 10. We might increase 10 to 15 or even 15 to 20. And if we combine these two system, uh, these two parameters, we have like three different programs. What we call <coughs> the uh, prevent refresh, which is a low fluence, low setting, so 5 to 10% milli uh, millijoules, 5 to 10 millijoules and 5 to 10% coverage. We might use 10 to 15 millijoules, 10 to 15%, which is what we call the Revitalize maintain program, and if you have a little bit more intense textual changes or scars, you go up to 15 20 uh, millijoules with 15 20 percent coverage with the transform <coughs> or new program. Okay, these are the three different options. You can play and do whatever you want, but this is how I, I classify the treatment when I use it. Okay, so if we use that, what will you have here? You have a low fluence, means that shallow penetration and low density. You're gonna cover a small surface area, not so much uh, density, okay? So you will have a lot of non-touched tissue, so the result will not be so amazing on the texture and on the depth. If you increase the fluids, you will get a little bit deeper, and here you have more density too, so we'll get, we will have a deeper and more, and more extensive surface change. In the third program, with deepest penetration and the highest densities. Okay, you get more fluids meets deeper penetration and higher density, so you cover more surface. That translates at the end in superficial collagen stimulation with mild textual change up to this where we get the maximum of collagen stimulation and the deepest effect with more textual uh, improvement. What are my settings? Well, I have to recognize I don't have the logs in my practice. I had it for one year because the company wanted me to de develop the protocols for them. But uh, I, as I said, this morning, I live in Spain, and Spain is a miserable country. We don't have so much money to spend, honestly, and, and I, ha I have the hello. Uh, and I'm using the hello, uh, and having the hello, I don't absolutely need to have a moxie in my practice. If you can afford it, perfect. But I can because I cannot have everything that's in the market. And I had it for one year. I used it in many patients to develop the protocols. 
and I tell you what I did when I had the device in my practice. So I divided the patient like in three times. Patients 30 to 35, where you have a slight pore size increase, um, uh, uh, increased pore size, small wrinkles, let's say a textural change which is a little bit more than the one that you're gonna get with BBL and clear cells. Okay, and I tell you that because as I, tell, I told you this morning, when patients go through my door, my practice, after giving their name, what they get is a BBL treatment, okay? Before I have to say the name, they sit down and boom, they get a BBL and clear cell treatment. Everyone, I mean, I don't do a single patient for rejuvenation without BBL and clear cell. It's my basement treatment. I think I mean, you miss it. Sorry? Think Show the it. pictures. Show them the pictures. You get that. It takes you 20 minutes of your time, and after six years, one year of treatment, you get this result. There's no single patient that does not say that. Anyone that comes for a donation, even if they have wrinkles, if they have lines, they have surely skin changes, like quality, pigmentation, redness. It's impossible to have wrinkles if you don't have pigmentation and redness. And if you think about the aging process, it starts by background activity, pigmentation, lentiginous, telangiectasia, and textural change. And then with time, you have wrinkles. So anyone that asks for wrinkles, he has, if he hasn't done it before, has surely pigmentation. And I tell you, if your patients love Botox, and they will, they will adore BBF because the result is much more visible. You, if, you, if anyone that comes to practice has pigmentation, you remove the best at the lines, what will the people see when they look at you? Pigmentation. If you take pigmentation away, you won't see the lines anymore. And I can tell you, many patients coming from Botox, I, rec I recommend them to start with BBF, and when they come back, they don't want to do Botox. They say, I, I already look great. They will do it at the end. But I can tell you that the difference between a Botox, I mean, and before and after, between a Botox and a BBL is absolutely much better for a BBL than for a Botox. And it's, uh, again, if you convince one of your patients to do BBL, they will see the return. And I say to, have lo uh, to get your patients loyal, if you give them a good advice, they will believe in you for the rest of their lives. I remember patients coming from my practice to be treated for laxity. How, what do you have for laxity? Surgery. Rest is bullshit. I mean, friends and whatever. It's like throwing money into the tube, it will go away. I can restore a face with calcium hydroxide with diamond in eight years. I will put back laxity, and it takes eight years. If you do uh, Uthera, I have Uthera. It's a preventive treatment. You need four years to see improvement, which is really mandatory. But it takes a long time. It's very expensive. And they will have to spend 1,500 euros every year to see something after three years. Okay? You do a video one week after, they look great. So I would recommend that patient coming for laxity. Hey, let me do something. You do a video first, and then we talk about any kind of laxity. They will do whatever you want, because they know you're not cheating them, and you're offering them things that work. So again, in my practice, everyone that comes, I recommend them to start by video. I will not do that if it's August, but if they can, they, I will start with that. And if I look at the patient, and I know the improvement I can get with BBL clear cell, and I see a textual change that is a little bit more than what I'm going to get with BBL clear cell, that's a patient I will recommend to go and jump from Oxy and Hello to get a little bit more, okay? It's like an ad. And I tell you that because I think since I have the device, I've never done a Hello or a Moxy without a BBL in the same day. So anyone that does Moxy or BBL or Hello has in the same day a BBL done, before, immediately before. And it's for free. You can already pay for the BBL and Moxy, uh, Hello Moxy, BBL for me is seven minutes and half not consumable. And I know the results are going to be much better. So it's easier to get them back to do the treatments. So this will be the typical patient that I look at their face and they have a little bit more than the improvement I will get with BBL and, and clear cell. 10, 10, which is about four passes. Patients between 34 and 35, they have a little bit superficial wrinkles a little more active pigmentation and the skin tone is a bit worse. In that case, I will increase to 1550, 50 millijoules, 15 percent. A little bit like this type of skin. And then for those over 45 that are not probably yet needing a resurfacing, uh, hello could be an option in this case, but I don't have a hello. I would in that case use probably 2020. Okay? Even this situation, you're gonna see it's a treatment you're doing is five minutes, no more than that, six minutes. The downtime in that case will be two, three days of redness and limited swelling, okay? It's not gonna be as efficient as an aggressive hello. And Moxie will never get to the point of a hello treatment, so, so it will not be able, it's How not such I, I usually do one, uh, but uh, you can do more. 
and you can do more. And I will show you a patient afterwards where I did one for acne scars, and if she did work really well, I recommended her to do a few more. And you can do as many as you want, but you should see already something with the first one. Okay? If you have a darker skin type, you probably have to put down your settings, and instead of doing one, you're gonna do two to three sessions. Okay? Skin type's four, and this patient I showed you this morning, I mean, I didn't do a moxie on him. It's just to show the skin type, okay? It's a, it's a darker skin type. Here I would use probably 10-10, I would not go over that because we have a high risk of hyperpigmentation. So in these type of patients, I put down my influence and my setting and my intensity, and I would do more sessions in that case, probably two to three sessions. And you can also use it in skin types five or six. Here, I don't have experience, so I put these images because I haven't treated any patient with that. But I have images of, you can see images of uh, Jason Posner in the States in Miami, treating skin type six with Moxie. He uses five, five, he will, or probably a series of four to five treatments. And he get really nice results improving skin uh, quality, even pigmentation. Okay? So these are my settings. Now, let's go and do the treatment. To the treatment, I will recommend you to come around the table, uh, because if not, you're not gonna see anything. Take it, you will see it's not heavy at all. It's very light, very, very um, ergonomic, easy to use. Uh, it's really, really user friendly, okay? The only thing it has, is it has a tip, a consumable, which uh, is needed. But the, the, I mean, the reason of, it, of this consumable is not an economical issue. I mean, it's not like other companies that charge you 300 euros for a tip to get your money. Uh, the, the main issue why they use a tip is because the FDA asks for that because uh, since this device induces coagulation, that means we have debris on the surface and this touches the surface. So we'll have rests of coagulated tissue here. You cannot use the same tip for two patients. So to get the FDA approval, they had to put a disposable that they need is not gonna be used in two different patients. And that's why it has a time counter. So after 30 minutes, you have to throw it away. I they know you need about seven minutes to do a face treatment, so they give you 30, but the idea is that you don't use the same tip for different patients because it's a safety issue for them. I mean, you know how people are. They were able to use the same tip for uh, 10 people, and this might be dangerous by health, health issues. Uh, but the cost of that is, I don't know, it's about 50 euros. It's, it's nothing compared to these 400 they charge yeah. in all the companies, okay? So, good. Second thing, I'm here, not on vacation, but almost, so I'm not gonna do a treatment like I do it at home, okay? So I'm not gonna do a 2020. I'm leaving tomorrow. I don't wanna have a phone call tomorrow saying, hey, the patient did today, She's brown like a whatever. So I'm gonna do very smooth treatment. It's not, we're not looking for the result. It's just to show you how it works, okay? Uh, in my practice, it would be more aggressive than I'm gonna do here today. So looking at her, she has a little bit of melasma and pigmentation, so she will have to be even so on a, on a bleaching formulation afterwards. So we're gonna do the smoothest treatment we can do, which is a 5-5, five five, okay? So you can see, I put here, the energy, the density, and how many passes I'm going to do. And he will deliver the shots, thinking that I will be passing six times over the area. You can do it in six, you can do it in four. I prefer to do it in six because the more passes you do, the less painful it will be because you're not doing so many shots at the same time, okay? And as I said, it has a motion-activated system that will deliver the shots depending on my speed to be sure that the result is homogeneous, okay? Now, this is the only thing that needs a brain. Okay, now you have done that, you can train a monkey, give it to him, and he will be able to do the treatment. Okay, you don't need to think anymore. It's absolutely easy to do, and it's fast. I mean, you will see, we'll do it. I mean, I'm going to be talking, it's a little more time, but you can do it in five minutes. They are on the topical anesthesia, and afterwards they might be staying with a bit of cooling for about 15 minutes. Perfectly tolerable, they can put makeup, go home, and do almost normal life. So they should be out of the sun for about 10 days to be sure that there's no pigmentation afterwards but it's a really, really easy treatment, okay? What about tattoos? No, no, this is not for tattoos. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's not gonna get so deep. I mean, it's better not to shoot, shoot over the area, but I mean, if, if it's a, it's, if this might be superficial, so it could be that you remove part of that, so better not treat that area, okay? If it's hair, hair, it's not a problem, it's not a hair removal system, but for the pigment, it could be that the tattoo is a little bit removed, so stay a little bit out of the tattoo area. That's a good question, yeah. Uh, okay, so what I, I do normally is two passes, like one, two, one, two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two, and another one, two, one, two, one, two, to make it easier, okay? I press on the, on the food, and then, you see, 
One, two. It has to stay on the green. If, I, if I'm on the green, I'm on the right speed, I'm not too fast. If I move too fast, it will tell me and get orange or red. And you see, this is absolutely no secret. Is it okay? A little bit hot? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. A little bit stinging, yeah? Like small needles, eh? Mm -hmm, yeah. As you do more passes, it's gonna get a bit more hot, a bit more uncomfortable, but absolutely terrible. Again, this is a very mild treatment. You can be like four times more aggressive. One, two, one, two, no, second. Another two passes, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, two, two. Sorry? Yeah, I mean, there can be a little bit. Even imagine, if I do the normal process, it's going to be a 5% coverage. You can probably overlap 10 times and it's not going to be a big difference because the density we're using is really low. Oh, wait, wait, I, I have to do another two passes. Last two, one, one, two. Uh, but even the contrary, sometimes you might say, hey, uh, the area under the eyes, you have more wrinkles. Mm -hmm. So you might say, hey, let's do a more, few more passes over this area. The good thing about that is that you can be very, very <coughs> homogeneous, mm -hmm. but if you want, you can say, I want to do a few more passes under the eyes, okay? Or in this area where I see more scars. So now I have done six passes. I know I have a 5% of five joules. Imagine you have more wrinkles, you say, you know what? I'm going to do a few more passes, blah, 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 blah. Here I have some scars, I do some more, blah, 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 blah. So I have a, over a overall 5%, but in some areas I might add a little bit more. It's up to you. When you get experience, you might play with that. It's not like other ladies that you do a shot and you get back, back, and you cannot change. Here you can play and just adapt to what you want to do. But if you do a homogeneous delivery, you get what the machine says, okay? Okay, let's go no for need the... need Zimmer? The, I have Zimmer, okay? Here I'm, going, I'm showing that you can work without Zimmer. If you get to the more aggressive settings, you can just do it with uh, uh, numbing cream. Again, I, I love my patients and my patients love me because I make them suffer less. So if you have a Zimmer in your practice, please take it and hold it. It's much better for them. I do all my lasers with, with, with Zimmer. Will the Zimmer decrease the result because the skin yeah, it is reduces, No, I don't really, because we are doing coagulation here. It's not like a non, and if you're doing a non-ablative procedure, non-coagulation like clear silk, it's just heat. You're not coagulating tissue, then I will not use cooling, okay? With, you're going to see tomorrow when you do the clear silk, we're not doing cooling because you remove the heat and not having coagulation and not having ablation, all the effect is induced by basically the heat. Uh, here, having coagulation, heat is not so important. You already have a tissue damage, which is a coagulation will, which will induce the, the effect. So immediately after the treatment, I even might put them cooling pads on the surface, okay? So I think in the cooling is, issue is very important to take it off when your only way of stimulating collagen is in doing a non-ablative, non-coagulative uh, biostimulation. But if you have or ablation or coagulation, removing the heat is not a problem. So what is your post-care Yeah, well, I use in my practice um, a product from Bioderma called Matrithium, okay? Which is a very smooth serum that has hyaluronic acid and it's very moisturizing. It's like a, like a water that, ha that has almost nothing. It's like a fluid skin, they love it. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. It's not fat, uh, they try it perfectly, it's not irritating, and it works pretty good. I, I like the Aquaphor, for example. People talk about the Aquaphor, I hate it. My patients get red, it's itchy, it's, it's crazy. It's very and, and they, I don't know, my patients had a lot of derm contact dermatitis with Aquaphor. So I use this matricin product, and then two days after, they jump to the, it's a cream called Fusidin, which is a Fusidic acid cream. It's a very smooth cream with a little bit of antibiotic, okay? Yes. okay? Uh, the first two days, they might not tolerate it because the skin is very sensitive. But uh, So the first two days, I only use this serum. And then from day two on, they use the serum and the Fusidine cream until they recover it, which is about four or five days. And what about the itching agent? Like yeah. 
Yeah, what I use is a modified Klingman formulation. And would you, when we, when you will start? Three weeks before to two months after. No, when after, I, after the procedure, I mean. Yeah, when they, when they recover. After peeling? After peeling. Yeah, when they peel, that's probably between three and five days after. I mean, there's almost no downtime with these settings, okay? Uh, but if you do the more aggressive settings, it might be a bit red, could be a bit swollen for two, three days. And when they, once they peel, which is between day four and five, then we take the bleaching formulation with a uh, 